hey everybody this is ebony and welcome back to my channel everything eb hey y'all hey now today's uh video is going to be different it, it's not a weight loss update really i mean i'll throw that in there but nothing exciting i thought i would do a video on weird or unexpected things that has happened to me since i had surgery if this is your first time on my channel or running across one of my videos, welcome, welcome. My name is Ebony. Please consider subscribing and following either my weight loss slash bariatric surgery updates or my savings and cash envelopes and debt payoff. My channel has a little bit of everything. Um, initially, I was going to do my lock journey, but I always forget. So, But if y'all go back and look at my videos, my hair is really growing and really finally coming together. So I may throw some of those in here and there or whatever. But anyway, if you don't know, again, my name is Ebony and I had gastric bypass surgery on February the 5th of 2021. So I'm about 14 months post-op. Um, I've only lost about a pound and a half since the last time I weighed myself. So now I'm 172.2 as of the other day. Um, so I don't know if my body, you know what y'all, I'm gonna take these glasses off because that glare is bothering me. So, um, I don't know if my body's just coming up to the end of what it wants to do. You know, that is like 153, 54 pounds or so down. So, I mean, I can imagine that maybe that's just what my body's going to do, you know, and I'm happy with it. I did want to be about 165 and kind of see what I thought of myself then, and maybe I'll get there, maybe I won't, I don't know. I'm sure if I make some changes, I will probably continue to lose, but that's the topic for another video. So, um, I'll tell you all, just in case this is your first time seeing me, my highest weight, um, I am five feet and a half inch maybe knocking on five one my highest weight was 324 pounds my weight the day of surgery was 278 pounds and i am now 172 pounds so whatever that math is is how much i lost 152 153 i don't know <clears throat> anyway so yeah um i'll just get into the video this video today is 10 weird or unexpected things that have happened to me since having weight loss surgery. Um, that's probably what I named the video so you all will see it in the title. I have my notes as always off to the side so I definitely will need to look down to remember. These are in no particular order or anything like that. It's just I've started to notice things and really pay attention to things and I said well, let me just start to maybe write it down. Well, I don't write it down, but I put it in um, a note in my phone. And so I'm like, to just kind of maybe talk about this and see if anybody else is experiencing any of these or anything else. So if you are experiencing anything, if you've had weight loss surgery and you are experiencing any of the things that I am, leave me a comment and let me know. Also, um... If you have experienced some other weird things or unexpected things have happened to you since surgery that you didn't expect, put it down in the comments. Let's talk about it, y'all. But anyway, let's get into the video. So the first one is that I have become so much more outgoing and comfortable with myself. I didn't even realize until like the last few years, like I said, to where I started getting uncomfortable around everybody that I've never really fully been comfortable in my own skin um i always just thought i was sort of shy until i get to know you which is weird because i don't think anybody else would say that about me but i always thought that um but what i think it really was is that i was just not fully and completely comfortable in my own skin i'm sure the weight loss is probably 99 percent of it and a little bit of it is like you know i'm my age you kind of come into a point in your life where you're just like whatever it's about me you know i don't care what anybody else thinks i don't care what anybody else says within reason of course um so yeah i've just become so much more outgoing i'm, I'm talking to everybody i'm laughing with everybody i'm joking with everybody um you know not just sitting off quiet i'm, I'm up at events i'm dancing i'm which i used to do back in the day but it got to a point where i just wasn't comfortable with that so um, 
this is probably the most comfortable that I can recall in my adult life being with myself and in my own skin um, and around other people. So that's the first one. The second one is I did not expect it to be so hard for my mind to catch up with my body, so to speak. So like I said, I'm down over 150 pounds and I've said this in videos before. Of course, I see that I'm smaller. I see weight loss when I look in the mirror, when I put on my clothes. Um, but mentally, it's hard for me to remember that I can only eat a couple bites. Even after a year later, it's still hard for me to remember that I'm not in plus size clothes anymore. That I need to buy a smaller size. And it's still hard for me to see that I am so much smaller. Like, I still call myself big. I still see myself as a big girl. Um... I don't know, I might come back to this one because another one on here kind of relates to that. But yeah, I just really didn't expect for my mind to still be 324 pounds, if that makes sense, when my body was no longer that. So the next one is I didn't expect for my body, some of my body parts to hurt that didn't hurt when I was bigger or also, some of the my bones kind of poking out, like my, my, my collarbone, you know, my shoulder bones, my pelvic bone. Yeah, <laughs> it's ridiculous. Like, when I'm laying down, it's literally poking out like an elbow. Like, I never even felt that pelvic bone before that I can recall. It's just really weird. It feels weird. I didn't expect it. And then some of my body parts that didn't hurt when I was bigger hurt now. Like my hip hurt sometimes when I walk too much. That didn't happen when I was bigger that I can recall. And my tailbone, y'all, my butt be hurting. Ooh, um, I forget what I went to, but whatever it was, I sat like in a folding chair <clears throat> excuse me all night basically i mean up and down because whatever it was we weren't just sitting the whole time but it added up to a nice amount of time me sitting in that folding chair and i could not for the life of me re like realize why my butt was hurting y'all and i was like is it from sitting in that chair all night and i come to the conclusion i came to the conclusion that it was and i'm going to tell you why um, because I was sitting with my legs crossed, which I do believe is, is one of my other ones. Yeah, I always sit with my legs crossed, y'all. So that's number four. So I might as well combine three and four together. I always, uh, even now, look, that's just the way that I'm more comfortable. I never did that before. I always sit with my legs crossed. So that's what made me realize it because... The next day, I think, or the day after that, I went somewhere and I sat with my legs crossed. And that part of my butt is what I was on. It was hurting so bad. I was like, that is exactly what it's from. So, yeah, that was number three, body parts hurting and poking out that I didn't expect. And then number four, like I said, was me just always sitting with my legs crossed. And I'm going to throw another one in with that. When I was bigger and used, like, a public restroom... I always, always, always went to the handicap stall. Even though I'm short and it's harder to squat over a taller toilet seat or toilet, I needed that space. Like a regular stall was just too much, you know, too tight. And now I don't do that. I just go to the first available clean stall. It's very, very, very weird. I didn't even notice that I did that every time until now I don't. Um, if it happens to be a handicap stall, then it does, but it rarely ever is because a lot of people like to use that one so it's dirty a lot. So that's four. And then number five is my feet are much, much smaller. When I was bigger, I would buy like an eight and a half, sometimes a nine, depending on the shoe. And with me being so short, I didn't really understand why my feet would seem so big. And now my feet are like a seven, seven and a half. Like I'm back in youth 
kids shoes which saves me money um but yeah my feet are like two two and a half sizes smaller i didn't expect that and i i'm in facebook groups so i heard people say that their feet shrank but i didn't expect for it to be so drastic like i can't fit any of my shoes from before like any of them okay that was number what number five hold on y'all yeah that was number five Okay, and so number six is my taste buds. I knew they would change, but it's like flavors are stronger now. Everything is salty. Everything is super sweet. I don't know why or what, what that could be, but when I tell you I season my food much less, it's like everything is either really salty or sweets are just really, really too sweet. Um, I expected to maybe start eating some things that I didn't eat before or stop eating some things that I ate all the time, which that has kind of happened. I really eat pretty much the things I, I ate before, but I didn't expect for my, my senses to flavor, so to speak, to be so heightened. And it, that's just weird to me. And then let's see. Number seven, this, yeah, these are like body, getting into the body ones now, I guess. Number seven is I always have liquids running from my nose. And it's not like a runny nose. I'm trying not to be too graphic. But yes, I have a runny nose sometimes. But it's not like a runny nose. It's like full on liquid, like rushing out of my nose. Like I have to catch it. Because it'll go down in my mouth. Sometimes it's more than other times. But to the point where I thought something was wrong. I looked it up on the internet. And it was saying like there could be brain fluid and all of this. But it's not yellow. And they said it would be yellow. But please, if you are experiencing this, please let me know that I'm not the only one. And I really don't mean like a runny nose where you're sniffling or you have to wipe your nose often. I mean almost like water running from my nose. I talked to my primary care doctor about it. He gave me a little, like one of those little urine cups or sample cups or whatever. He wants me to try to catch it, but it's not usually that much or either I'm not just walking around the house with it all day, but it's not that much where you can put it in a cup. Um, even if it, if it sort of is, by the next time it happens, the little bit that made it into the cup is probably dried up because it's not that much. But it's a lot, y'all. And it happens sometimes when I'm just sitting there. It happens sometimes when I bend over. Like if I go to sit on a toilet or I bend over to pick something up, it happens. But sometimes I'm just sitting there or laying in the bed and it just happens. I really, 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 really want to know if this happens to any of you all. Please tell me I'm not the only one. Because it really does have me nervous. I'm like, is that is that brain and spinal fluid? or Because remember, I have IIH. So maybe my body is just releasing the extra fluid that way. I don't know, y'all. But let me know if that happens to y'all. That's one of the ones I'm kind of concerned about. So I've been talking to my doctor about it. And we're trying to get it figured out. And if it ends up being something, I will definitely let you all know. All right. So number eight is dumping. So I always heard about dumping, dumping, dumping. But most people talk about uh vomiting or like having to go number two like that like gotta go in pain sweating all of that stuff i don't have those forms of dumping but what i have figured out and i'm just calling it dumping i don't know if that's it this is another thing i want you all to tell me if anybody out there experiences this same thing so if sometimes when i eat maybe if i eat too fast or maybe i eat a bite or two too much I, I do get sick where I'm nauseous. I get that part of it. And it is horrible. Sometimes I vomit rarely, but sometimes I don't. Um, but I'm just really, really nauseous. I get hot. I'm I'm hot and, and just feeling like I need to throw up. And then as soon as that passes, I have to pee immediately. And it's like, you better go now. I cannot make it anywhere i'm like give me to a restroom right now i gotta go 
and I, I wouldn't have to go before that, but it's as soon as that nauseous or that, uh, yeah, nauseated feeling goes away, it's like, like I've been holding my pee all day. Like, like I've been, and I've been drinking alcohol. I'm just saying that's how bad it is. And it just happens. And it took me a few times, quite a while, actually a couple months to really notice that those two things are going together. As soon as I start to feel better, so it's almost like my body dumps with urine, if that makes sense. And I don't know if that's normal with gastric bypass, maybe something in the rerouting. That's how you get rid of the extra calories that your body didn't absorb. I don't know what it is, but I just think that is so weird. But it happens. And I mean, I better get to a bathroom and I better get to a bathroom quick. So number nine is... I did not expect to feel so uncomfortable with people calling me small or skinny or little. Um, it's weird to me. I, I First of all, I don't see myself as small or skinny or little. But people be like, girl, you're so skinny. Girl, you're so small. And I'm always like, mm. I'm pretty sure it's because I was so big and I'm so much smaller, but I'm not small. I'm not skinny. And it feels really, really weird when people tell me that or when people say, don't lose no more weight. I'm like, to me, I have plenty more <laughs> to spare. You know, not saying I'm going to, because like I said, I'm okay with this. Um, Y'all know I'm about to be on my journey. That's something else I'm gonna tell you at the end of the video. For my panty, um, you know, my tummy tuck or whatever. And I think I feel a lot better after that, like I always say. But it's just weird for people to call me small and people to call me skinny or little. That's the weirdest thing to me. It just feels really, really weird. And I don't know how to take it. Like, I just don't know how to take it. So number 10, like I said, these were in no particular order. But the last one is really really strange to me i told you all i'm five feet and like a half inch i always say five one but really i'm five feet whatever people think i look shorter i cannot tell y'all how many people have told me that i didn't know you was that short are you shrinking too you getting shorter too and i'm like no, not at all. <laughs> no, but I guess because I was so much wider, I didn't look so short. I don't know, y'all, but people think I look shorter. Like, not a few people, a lot of people. And I'm like, maybe, uh, look, I always got a problem with my lash. And it don't never be actually coming off. It just feel like it when I blink or something. I don't know. But, yeah, y'all, people think I look shorter. I just think that's so weird. It's so strange. I'm not getting shorter. I guess smaller makes them, me being smaller makes them notice my height more. I've always been this short. I'm not shrinking at 43. I surely hope not, but no. Um, so, yeah, y'all, that is 10 unexpected or weird things that has happened to me after having um, gastric bypass surgery. Again, y'all, talk to me in these comments. If y'all got some strange or unexpected stuff that happened to y'all since y'all had surgery, gastric bypass, VSG, anything, let me know. Let's talk about these crazy things. And if uh, some of these things are happening to you, talk. tell me, especially the runny nose thing um, and the dumping, the, the peeing or whatever after you get sick. Please let me know if any anybody else out there is experiencing these things. It is just crazy to me. And so moving away from that really quickly before I close out the video. Um, I told y'all that my appointment with the plastic surgeon for my tummy tuck. Um, excuse me, y'all. For my tummy tuck was scheduled for June 25th or something like that. Tell me why they call me and tell me that they had me scheduled with the wrong doctor and that they had to reschedule my appointment. So I'm like, okay, you know, why is it July 28th now? And I know time going by fast, but come on, y'all. Come on, I made that appointment, I know, back in January. 
Why why y'all playing? I gotta wait seven months to, to just for a consultation. And then I don't know what process I'm gonna have to go through after that. I'm gonna have to go to a back pain specialist to try to get insurance to cover it. I don't know what I'm gonna have to do, but so yeah, those videos will be coming, but they're not gonna even start until the end of July because that's when my first appointment is. Um, I was thinking about calling to see if by chance they had like uh cancellation or opening or anything before then but and i might but whenever i do it i'm going to take you all on that journey with me that is one that i'm very nervous about because of the recovery like with with my gastric bypass i didn't have any issues whatsoever i didn't have any pain i didn't have to have a um wound bag or whatever it's called like a drainage tube i didn't have to have any of that so i feel like i had it really easy i'm blessed um and then with my tube ligation that i had a couple months ago no pain no anything either one of those i didn't get my pain medicine filled so this one i'm nervous about i feel like i'm gonna have to have because i haven't seen any um videos or any shows or anything where if somebody's had a tummy tuck or a panty i can't pronounce the real name guys but it's it's like the tummy tuck where but they just remove the skin i think the tummy tuck they repair the muscles but i don't think it, my insurance actually pays for that part but um where they they're always in a lot a lot a lot a lot of pain can barely move um don't really know how to lay they have these wound, uh, the wounds and, and whatever they have to clean and change all the bandages all the time. And the drainage thing with the bubble with the, oh, y'all, I don't want to do that. I don't, I don't, I don't. I know I have to. It comes with the territory because I don't want to keep this big old apron on me for the rest of my life. But I already told my guy, like, I know I've been good. The surgery we did, I done had whatever these surgeries. I've been good. I've been able to just bounce right back. But this one, I'm expecting to be a hard recovery, and you need to be ready to take care of me because I'm gonna need it. So again, I'm gonna take you all on that journey with me, and uh, I guess that's all for today. I just want to come on and talk to y'all since I haven't um, done a video in a couple weeks. I have been recording like what I eat in the days, but I always forget to finish out the whole day. So I don't want to cheat and put it together. So I'm going to try to remember tomorrow to do a what I eat in a day. Um, And yeah, I don't know. I want to start working out. Maybe I can start showing you all the workouts I do right now. It's nothing. But I like to do the walk away to pounds videos. And I've been paying for a Planet Fitness membership for years. And I know for a fact I haven't been not once since i had surgery mm -hmm. that i can remember not once so yeah i'll start back uh working out i'm just trying to get some content as uh for this channel as well as finish doing what i gotta do to get my body all the way where it wants to and needs to be so thank you everybody for supporting my channel hopefully you made it to the end of this video i am at about 20 minutes or a little bit over because y'all know i don't really do no editing i don't even really know how so they pretty much go up the way that they are um here and there i can do a little something but anyway thank you all so much for supporting my channel and um i will talk to you all see you in the next video